we are finally doing the most anticipated video of the year, which is my electroforming tutorial video. You guys have been asking for this. Anytime I have posted one of my cinematic like making videos, there has been at least a handful of people in the comments asking what this process is and how do you do it. I will be going into electroforming as a tutorial. And this is going to be a beginner's tutorial, so it should be fairly easy enough for anybody to follow. Before we start with the tutorial, there is a disclaimer. Now, electroforming does use some dangerous chemicals, so please be aware of what you are doing, what you can do at home, make sure you have proper ventilation, proper PPE. To electroform, you need one or two things. There will be a list with links in the description, so check that out down below to see where you can purchase everything. Some of the things that you're going to need is a rectifier, um, electroforming solution, graphite paint, brightener, anode, mask and gloves, stirring sticks, thin copper wires, bus bar, gator clips, latex, sealant, and patina, which I use liver of sulfur. What is electroforming? If you have just stumbled on this video and are wondering what the heck I'm talking about, electroforming is depositing a substantial amount of metal on a piece. A little bit different than electroplating, which is depositing a thin amount of metal on possibly another metallic piece. Whereas electroforming is typically done to non-metallic objects. With electroforming, you are taking the copper ions from an anode, depositing them on a cathode. Now, both of those are connected through an electrical current, and that's how those copper ions get deposited on that cathode. That cathode is usually painted with something conductive since typically it is a non-metallic matter. So it could be a crystal, it could be a rock, a piece of wood. I've seen people do bugs like spiders, beetles, dragonflies. Leaves and all kinds of organic material are very popular, but almost anything can be electroformed as long as it is dried out thoroughly if it's organic or it's sealed properly so that the bath does not dissolve it totally. First, you wanna design the piece that you're going to electroform. Now, I tend to sculpt intricate pieces with uh, clay and crystals and stuff because I do sell in my Etsy shop, but since you are just starting out, pick something a little bit simpler. Pick a you know simpler rock, tumble, crystal, something that you won't mind ruining if it doesn't come out the way you want it to. Don't forget, electroforming is a bit of an unpredictable process sometimes. Take whatever you're using, whether it's a tumble or a piece of wood or whatever it is, and Maybe attach like a bail to it or a ring band if you're gonna make it a ring. Bail will you turn it into a pendant. You can use super glue to attach it. That's very, very common among electroformers. Or just use like an epoxy clay or something. Epoxy clay is my preferred method since again, I do like to sculpt details into my pieces. Now, if you are going for a more delicate look, uh, the super glue does work a little bit better. Uh, once your method of attaching your bail or pendant or whatever you're doing to your piece, once that has dried, you want to make sure you know you check for any imperfections so if there's some extra glue you know you can sand it off get rid of it cut it off if there's epoxy imperfections in the epoxy and then make sure you do you know sand that out because once you start painting it with conductive paint whatever imperfections are there will stay your next step is now going to be to paint it with conductive paint this is one of the most important steps because this will determine how well the copper sticks onto your piece. Now I use a homemade graphite paint. Um, I've been experimenting with a couple different recipes. They sometimes work really great, sometimes they're a little bit off, so I will not quite share them yet, but eventually I will make a tutorial on how I make my graphite paint. The most common conductive paint used um, by various electroformers is Safer Solutions. I've heard mostly pretty good things about it. A couple not so great, but I think that was due to a bad batch they had a while back and there was a lot of problems with it. But from the most part, it seems that a lot of uh, electroformers do prefer that Safer Solutions. Now, conductive paint can be quite expensive, but typically most people that are electroforming are making much smaller pieces, so a little bit does go a long way. Now, if you are doing like um say animal skulls or much much larger pieces which I have seen some people do but you may be going through that paint quite a bit so you might want to figure out a homemade solution when you are painting your pieces with conductive paint you want to make sure that your brush strokes are very even and you're not leaving actual brush strokes typically you can kind of get rid of that like brush like stroke on your piece by diluting your paint down with distilled water that's the most common method I prefer that because then I can get a nice smooth surface on the, anything I'm painting and then the detail of that piece will show up better. If you're making a homemade conductive paint, typically that paint is going to be black. You're gonna run into the problem where if you have say a clear quartz or a very um, 
clear or very light colored gemstone, you're going to see that black right through the stone and it does not look good, believe me. It really does not look good. To avoid that, you want to cover that with either some sort of maybe acrylic paint, like a white or silver, copper acrylic paint, or a nail polish. Uh, my kind of pen to stick to either like a nail polish or a metallic paint pen, depending on what I have on hand and what color and effect I'm going for. But sometimes I do have these um, like heat treated gemstones that are clear and I just paint the back of them with a silver paint pen so it does not show the um, black graphite paint. Now I typically do about two coats of the connective paint, let it dry between the two coats and inspect your piece very, very closely for any spots you miss. It's very easy to miss spots sometimes, and anything that is not painted in conductive paint that is not metallic will not form copper over it. If you are making a ring, for example, and you are using a piece of like metal for the ring band, then you will see that that will grow copper on its own without needing to be painted, as long as it's not a coated metal. But as long as it's conductive enough, it will grow with the copper, no problem. And if you miss any spots, you'll take your piece out of the bath to see this nice, perfect, coppery coating, and then you'll find that one or two little spots that are just white, because <laughs> your epoxy clay is showing through. That happens, happens to every single beginner. So after all of the conductive paint has dried, the next step in my process is going to the latex. I want to make sure that anything that goes into my electroforming bath is not going to get eaten or dissolve or contaminate my bath. So in order to protect both the bath and my pieces, I want to make sure that I am coating them with something. So most people do tend to use latex. I currently have this latex. It's okay. I'm just trying to use it all up at this point. It's not the greatest. But I have seen a couple other brands that people use, especially this one, this like blue colored one or any kind of colored latex because it's much easier to see if you get it on a part of your like pendant or ring or something that you don't want latex on is now if you do paint everything very well with conductive paint, but you get latex on a spot where there's supposed to be conductive paint only, you're gonna end up missing that spot. It will not electroform over. Now also some things can actually get dyed blue from the electroforming bath, so you kind of want to make sure that you're sealing anything that you think could potentially get dyed or damaged. Another reason to seal is that anything that is under a seven on the MO scale, so the MOHS scale, which is the hardness of your crystals and gemstones, that will get most likely eaten or damaged by the solution. So anything under a seven. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that some crystals are conductive. Things like hematite or pyrite, they are conductive. And regardless of whether you want them to form copper or not, if you put them in that bath unsealed, they will form copper over. Just for my own sanity, I tend to just seal everything at this point. Now, the other reason for sealing a lot of things too is you don't want to contaminate your bath, especially if it's a crystal is getting dissolved by accident. So if you throw off your bath, it's very difficult to fix sometimes. You'll be troubleshooting it and you'll find out that it's very frustrating when you throw a piece into electroform and it's not forming or the copper is very, very brittle not shiny or your just amps even aren't turning on because something's thrown off so troubleshooting a bath is not a fun topic um i will make a video on that in the future for the most part you know once you have your bath running optimally you kind of really keep it that way so you always want to make sure to take care of it because it can last indefinitely so let's get to the fun part electroforming now this is my setup here. You don't need anything massive. Some people do have massive setups. They are on a much larger scale, but most you know, small businesses don't have a giant setup. We all have something similar where you will have your rectifier, which is a DC power supply basically. And then you'll have some sort of bin that holds the solution. So the bin can be plastic or glass. I just use this simple little sterilite container here and then I throw my anode in that. So your anode can be any sort of copper. Just want to make sure it's not coated in anything else or any other metals in there. A lot of people tend to use copper piping, which is a great way to take, you know, old copper piping and recycle it. Just got to clean it off very well. When I started, I got this very, very thick gauge wire. So I've been just simply using that up and it can take a while to use up uh, an anode. So I spool this around the bath and it does take a while for the uh, for all the copper to form off of it. But you can kind of see as the copper is going onto the pieces, the wire gets thinner and thinner and thinner. When you are attaching your gator clips from your power supply, an easy way to like remember is that the, the red gator clip goes on the anode, which is always going to be your piece of copper that you're forming from. 
Now your black gator clip goes on your cathode and your piece, in my case, is always painted black, so I remember, you know, the black goes with black. I hang my pieces from a bus bar that runs over top of my solution, so you don't want to get these clips wet. So you do want to make sure that wherever those clips are attached, that they won't fall into the solution. If you're using wire and you're not using, like, pipe, copper piping, you do want to make sure that wire, once it all thins out and degrades, that it won't sink in. So I usually do bend a portion of the wire over the lip so the gator clip is safe. Now you're going to take your jewelry piece or crystal, whatever you want to electroform, and you're going to take a very, very thin uh, copper wire. Make sure it's not coated in anything. So you do have to watch out with the craft store wires because sometimes they're coated and they are not bare copper. You want to make sure you have bare copper. And I take that bare copper and I hang it from this bus bar, which is another piece of bare copper. And I attach the black gator clip here. Now that piece, you want to make sure it's suspended in the solution, that it's not touching anything, not touching the sides. Sometimes that can interfere with the process if it is touching something. And if you have multiple pieces inside the bath, you don't want it to be touching another piece because sometimes you can electroform things together. I did that by accident also. Once everything is nicely sitting in your bath, you do want to turn on your rectifier and now set up your amps. So the basic rule is 0.1 amps for every square inch of surface area. So you kind of want to do some math and figure out how much surface area. Eventually you'll get a feel for it and you'll know how many amps you're going to roughly want to use for your pieces and depending on how long you want to um, run them in the bath for. Turn your rectifier on, you turn it up slowly to the desired amps because you can turn it up too high and if you leave it there you will actually like burn your piece and the copper won't come out good. Now when you're electroforming you want to electroform it for a minimum of I would say four to six hours if it's something that's very tiny. You'll get a small coat on there but if you want a nice thick coat and actually form the copper onto the piece then you do want to make sure you know you have it in the bath for quite a while. Now for me, typically all my pieces will be in the bath for 36 to 48 hours. Some things that I'm making that, especially like the much larger pieces, I'll have them in the bath for up to 72 hours. So they will stay in there until I'm satisfied that they have a nice thick coating of copper that the piece won't break and it's gonna be nice and durable. And if you take your pieces out of the bath and you find that they're not coming out very bright, they're coming out pinkish, salmon-y color, you're going to want to possibly add some brightener. The brightener will help fix a bit of the solution. Usually after I lecture from entire collection, I do have to add in more brightener and I typically normally add a few drops here and there. Once I take a piece out of the bath, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rinse it. I just rinse my pieces in distilled water. I have seen some people say they use baking soda also, but what I do for my, my personal process is that I will take the pieces out, rinse them in the distilled water, and I will set them aside once everything is done electroforming. That all gets rinsed in a, like a neutralizing soap. And then from there, I'm going to patina it. And then I do a uh, baking soda rinse. When you do rinse something that came out of your electroforming bath, you want to make sure that you do dry it immediately or else since this is bare copper you're going to get a patina and while you may want that in some pieces usually you don't want it on all of them and you want to have control of the patina if you leave something wet you'll find that it's going to change color very quickly also if you take your piece out of the water and you find that it's not bright and shiny it kind of has like a dull it has a thick coat but it's just dull or pinkish it's a very very easy fix just take a nice brass brush to it and you can take that and kind of just shiny it right up it's very very easy it just takes a few minutes of your time and you'll have a nice shiny copper piece in no time okay so now once you're done electroforming everything this is an optional step but you can do a patina now with a patina you can use heat you can use salt you can use colorants or you can use liver of sulfur my favorite is using liver of sulfur that will create a nice dark patina if you especially if you leave it in there for a while you can turn them almost black and i use that to get that nice dark black effect for certain pieces you do want to make sure you have a well ventilated area because liver of sulfur is quite smelly and not pleasant but usually i will dip my pieces in the liver of sulfur and and then from there, I will neutralize them in baking soda, which stops any further reaction. The longer you have it in the bath, the darker it gets. Once I'm done doing all the patinas on everything, last thing I'm gonna do is make sure I'm sealing all the pieces. So when you have something that comes out of the electroforming bath, over time, naturally, it will form a patina. If you want it to keep that nice, shiny, coppery, or rose gold type look to it, you wanna make sure you seal it 
or if you do put a patina on and you don't want it to change any further, also make sure you seal it. I typically use a protect clear but there's a variety of different sealants you can use. I just found that protect clear tends to work very well for me and I've had no issues for it and it seems to hold up very well for my customers as well. When you're wearing proper PPE, you definitely want to make sure you have a good mask. So something like one of these uh, that has the actual like filters on the sides and you can change these out. You want to change them out, no, I think it's every like three months, six months, it says it on the packaging. This will help a lot because some of this stuff you do not want to be breathing it in. You want to make sure you're definitely no, not touching these chemicals with your skin. So you're always wearing like gloves, being careful, you know how to neutralize these things. You do also want to make sure that something that's not thought about at first when a lot of people get into electroforming is the waste. When you are, you know, filtering your solutions, when you're performing maintenance, that will be a separate YouTube video also will be bath maintenance. You want to make sure that you're disposing of the waste properly. That is something that you are responsible for, especially, you know, if you are doing this as a small business. Now, that was the basics of electroforming. So I wanted to give you guys a detailed but basic tutorial so any kind anybody can start anybody can learn if you have anything you want to add any tips or tricks that you have learned please feel free to drop them down in the comments it'll help anybody else out who's watching this video i will be making a series of mini tutorials on electroforming and different things different techniques some things for like intermediate and advanced users as well i've been electroforming for about three or four years now so i've been doing that for a little while i am constantly learning new things about it so there's, al there's always something new to learn, and as I learn those things, I'm going to share them with you, so hopefully that helps you. Please let me know if you found this video helpful or if there's anything you else you would like me to add. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit those little buttons. Every little bit helps. I want to grow this channel and help more people out, and I know people love tutorials like this. If you have any other ideas or want to see any specific tutorials on how to do certain things, please leave a comment down below. I may get to it eventually. And thank you so much for all the support you guys have shown me so far. I'll see you next time.